Hey everyone! Welcome back to Electric Simplified. Today we're diving into an extremely crucial aspect of the electrical world, the earthing. This element plays a vital role in ensuring the safety of our electrical systems. In our previous video, we explored the concept that typically, three wires are connected to single-phase electrical equipment. That's why you'll often find plugs with three pins, each connected corresponding to a specific wire. Let us quickly recall the content. Firstly, we have the hot wire, which is responsible for delivering electrical power to our devices. Secondly, the neutral wire serves the crucial role of completing the entire circuit by carrying the current back to the transformer source. Also, we learned that it earns the name neutral wire because it connects to the neutral point of the transformer. And the neutral point of transformer is grounded to earth, establishing zero volt reference points. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any update. Now, let's shift our focus to the topic of our discussion today, the ground wire, sometimes referred to as the earth wire. At the plug, it is easily distinguishable with the earth pin often designed to be larger and longer. This design not only prevents incorrect plug insertion, but also ensures that earth is first connected and last disconnected, prioritizing our safety. All right, now let's explore why earthing is so crucial and how it contributes to a safe electrical system. In practical applications, the metallic frames of various equipment are commonly connected to the earth wire. Subsequently, all these earth wires are connected to the earth link at our main distribution board. From there, the earth link is extended to the earth rod, which is buried in the ground outside our house. Let us consider a scenario where the live wire becomes loose or breaks, making contact with the metallic frame of the equipment. Now the earth wire steps in to lower the risk of electrocution by providing an additional low resistance path for fault current to flow. You might wonder if all the fault current will simply flow through the earth wire into the ground and disappear? The answer is no, current doesn't flow without a complete loop. Instead, a complete circuit is formed from the hot wire to the equipment frame, then through the earth wire to the earth rod, into the ground, back to the transformer ground, and finally to the neutral point. This scenario signifies an earth fault where the current flows through the earth wire instead of the neutral wire. In a well-designed electrical system, the protective device will detect this fault and trip immediately to cut off the supply, significantly reducing the risk to humans and connected equipment. Let's observe what will happen if the earth wire is broken. Now if the live wire touches the metal frame, the loop is not complete. There will be no current flowing and the protective device will not trip. In this case, there will be a dangerous voltage at the metal frame remain unnoticed. When a person accidentally touches the metal frame of this equipment, the person will be completing the loop through ground back to the transformer source. Consequently, the fault current flowing through the body can increase risk of electrocution. Therefore, it is important to ensure a proper connection of earth wire to ground. In both scenarios, it is noticeable that the fault current flows through ground and back to transformer source. Now you might be wondering, since there's no physical cable in the ground, shouldn't this be an incomplete circuit? How is it possible for the current to continue flowing? However, during an earth fault, a substantial fault current does indeed flow through the ground. Does this suggest that the ground becomes a conductive path for the current to return to the source, completing the circuit? It might sound unusual, but that's the answer. To verify whether the soil truly serves as a conductive path in a circuit, we can conduct an experiment. The Earth's surface primarily consists of soil, sand, and rock. These materials are typically considered to have very low conductivity. If we place the soil into a container with two terminals and connect it with a battery and a light bulb, we will observe that the bulb doesn't light up. The soils appear to be more insulative rather than conductive, exhibiting very high resistance. This may prompt you to wonder, how does the higher fault current manage to flow when the soil in the ground has very high resistance and the distance is considerably far from our house to transformer station? In fact, the soil or ground will become the conductive path when the size involved is very huge, unlike the small volume container used in the previous experiment. For instance, in a garden, if we insert an earth rod into the ground and position another earth rod at a certain distance from the first one, then measuring the resistance between these earth rods will indicate a conductive result with significantly lower resistance. 
Although the ground resistance value may not be as low as copper cable, it is still sufficiently small to allow higher fault currents to flow. How is this possible? This is because the vast expanse of the ground provides almost unlimited sets of parallel paths that the current could take between the two electrodes. This parallel configuration significantly lowers the overall resistance to a smaller value. As a result, larger fault currents can flow. For easier understanding, let's draw an analogy using the transfer of water between two tanks. Think of the soil in a small container as a single pathway for water flow, while the huge ground is analogous to numerous parallel pipes, facilitating water flow. Consequently, you'll observe that having more parallel paths enables a greater flow of water, significantly reducing the overall resistance to water movement. Similarly, huge ground with countless parallel paths can result in very low equivalent resistance for fault current to flow. Despite the low resistance of the huge ground, it's important to emphasize that earthing functions exclusively as a conductive return path in the event of a ground fault. It should not be utilized as a substitute for the neutral cable during regular electrical operations. Certainly, various factors can influence soil resistivity, including the type of soil, soil moisture content, and temperature. For example, in areas near Rocky Mountains, the soil resistivity and ground resistance tend to be higher compared to areas closer to the sea. Besides, in some countries, colder temperatures in winter tend to increase soil resistivity, while warmer temperatures in summer can lead to lower resistivity. These factors should be taken into consideration when designing the earthing systems and protective devices. It is worth noting that earthing systems come in various types, including TT, TNC, TNS, IT, and others, which we will discuss in upcoming videos. That's it for today's video. I hope you have a clearer understanding of earthing. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bells, and share it with others. Thank you.